Country calls and aviation's greatest hero flies again in a one-man war against crime. The odds seem unsurmountable, yet his courage never flags. Single-handed through fog and sleet and snow, he daily risks his life in the cause of justice. And while he lives, the underworld dares not rest. Squadron S1. Objective reached. Finish your bombs. Squadron 72. Squadron 72, attention. Field clear. Take off immediately. Contact enemy bombers and bring down. Squadron S1, number seven calling. Return to headquarters immediately. Imperative. Very well, sir. I'm reporting to Major Steele at once. Keep after it. Well? One of the raiders was shot down, Major Steele. At last, what did they find? The pilot was killed, sir. The bomber was U.S. made, but there was nothing to identify either the ship or the dead man. Anything on the body? Only this scrap of paper, sir. It was all they found in his pockets. Well, this isn't the government code. Have it sent to headquarters, decoded and examined thoroughly. Yes, sir. And uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. Have they succeeded in locating Captain Albright? Not yet, sir. Albright's former experience in the service will be invaluable to us in this crisis. He has volunteered to help if needed, and they must be found. Yes, sir. I'll keep the radio boys at it.
Well, you're back safe, Martell. Where are the others? They're chased by federal planes. Number 11 was shot down. Now get this crate out of sight in a hurry. Most of the targets were hit, sir, and the planes landed at their various stations safely, except pilot number 11. His plane was shot down and he was killed in the crash. Father, another one... Quiet, Fury. Did the fool have anything on him to hurt us? The authorities found nothing to identify the plane or the pilot, sir. Any further orders? Not at present. Ivan Shark has spoken. Who can that be? Oh, just one of the boys. We'll soon see. Why, it's Martell. He'll have news. Number 7 reporting, sir. All the targets assigned to me have been bombed. Number 11 was shot down and... I have a report on that. Were you followed? No, sir. Good. I have a new assignment for you, an important one. I'm placing it in your hands because you've proven your ability. See that you live up to my expectations. I'll do my best, sir. Now listen closely. John Edwards, an inventor whom I've had investigated, is perfecting a rangefinder for naval and aerial rifles that will revolutionize modern warfare. I want his drawings, blueprints, and any working models that he may have. If necessary, make Edwards a prisoner, but don't harm him seriously. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Where do we find him? He lives with his daughter. All the data's on that paper. Memorize and destroy it at once. Do not fail me. Your will is as good as accomplished, sir. Radio room. I put Martell on the Edwards job. Broadcast to all operators to stand by for orders. I'm in here, dear. Oh, I was worried about you. Have you seen the paper? Yes, I heard the news over the radio. It looks bad, Joyce. What about your invention, the rangefinder? They'll try to get that, it's certain. You're not safe here, Dad. Now, you stop worrying, my dear. I'm taking precautions and sending the model to Captain Albright for safety. I'll put my drawings in the wall safe for the time being. Don't you think we should have police protection? No, I don't think that'd be wise. We don't want it known that we have anything to conceal here. Now, you know where Albright is. If anything should happen, you can get in touch with him by long distance. He'll come at once. Then notify Major Steele at government headquarters. I'd better get out of the post office and register this at once. Oh, don't bother, Dad. I'll go. Well, thank you, dear. Should we stop her? No. At the break, she's leaving. The job will be easy if there aren't any screaming women about. All right, Slick. Come on. Nothing to get excited about, Edwards, if you listen to orders. Not excited? Now listen. What do you want? We want the plans and the working model of your rangefinder, and we want them in a hurry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. You don't think I'd be fool enough to keep them here? That'd be silly, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'm just silly enough to think you've done just that. Now quit stalling, Edwards. 
Those plans are in that safe. Open it up. I want to look, see. You and Morton put him in the car. Boss's orders. We're taking him with us for insurance. Now hurry, that girl may come back. All right, Slick, get that box open. Well, that's a cinch. I can open that piggy bank with my hand. I don't care how you do it. Get it open. We better beat it. Here comes Edward's daughter back. What about Martell and Slick? They'll handle her. Let's scram out of here. Hurry it up. The boys have left. That means trouble. That does it. It's all yours, Martell. See who that is. We may have another fight in our hands. Back again. Must we grab her, too? Not unless we have to. Too much trouble. Get in there, quick. Dad! Oh. Operator, this is John, John Edwards' residence, Granite 2122. Get me long distance, quickly, please. Would that stop us? She's calling for help. No, listen. We might learn something valuable. Long distance? Get me Captain Albright at Carmen, Nevada. I'll hold the line. Hurry it, please. Thanks. How much speed do you think your new supercharger will give an airplane, Captain Albright? I can't tell, Chuck. As soon as I get it installed, I'll take the plane up for a test. You ain't gonna test nothing for the next day or two, Captain. According to my weather determinator, there's going to be plenty of storms all the way from here to the coast. <laughs> Mother old boy, maybe your instrument isn't quite accurate. It looks worthless. Worthless nothing. It's accurate, all right. There's a big storm coming. I've been picking up government reports, and they all agree. <laughs> Gee, that's funny. I thought nobody knew we were here. Hello? Yes, put them on. No one does except John Edwards. Because of the invention he's working on and his value to the government, I gave him my location. He wouldn't call except in an emergency. Yes? Yes, Joyce? What's that? I don't know. I can't tell. The safe is open and stripped clean. Operator! Operator! What is it, Captain? Well, what's wrong? Edwards has been carried off. His safe has been robbed and his plans are gone. I just heard his daughter scream, and then the phone went dead. Oh. Chuck, radio Major Steele, tell him to send some men over to the Edwards' home. Tell the Major I'm flying in at once. Yes, yes, but you're not talking about storms, over. You can't get through. I've got to get through. I tell you, that whole coast area is blanketed in fog. Will you stop the chatter and get that plane warmed up? I've got to change clothes. All right, I'm gone. A-12, calling B-7-6. Now, we're going to give you a break and take you to your father. Where is he? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> Don't shoot your fool. You'll have the cops after us. Swim out of here, quick. Calling Captain Albright. Consolidated field. Calling Captain Albright. Something must have happened. He'd surely answer if he were all right. Well, we've got to contact him and turn him back. It's suicide to try to land in this fog. Keep on trying. Consolidated field. Calling Captain Albright. Come in, Captain. Major Steele calling. Come in. Consolidated field calling Captain Albright. Albright? That's the man the Edward girls telephoned to. Who's he? I don't know, but we've got to find out. Quiet. Captain Albright answering Consolidated. Captain Albright answering Consolidated. Come in, Consolidated. Consolidated answering Albright. What's your position, Captain? Give your position. Come in. Estimated position 100 miles north of you. Altitude 5,000 fog and some rain. Visibility zero. 
Give me a report on landing field there. Come in. It's impossible to make landing here. The entire district is blanketed. Come in. I've got to come in there. What's your ceiling? Come in. Less than 200 feet and getting worse. Impossible to land. Let me talk to him. All right, this is Major Steele. There's no chance to land here without crashing. You better turn back at once. I've got to land there, Major. Tell him to clear the field and turn on the floodlights. I'll call when I see the lights. Come in. Don't be a fool, all right. You can't get through, I tell you. You better turn back. Come in. He's cut off. Try to raise him again. Get out to the field and find out who Albright is and what his connection is with John Edwards. Well, what's the use? He's as good as dead if he tries to land. I want to know who he is, dead or alive. Now get moving. That government man being there makes it doubly important. Do as I say. Yes, sir. Yes, Father? Something has happened. I have to get into the manor's makeup again. Oh, Father, those disguises of yours always worry me. Nonsense. I haven't been caught yet, have I? Well, there's always a first time for everything. You worry too much because I'm your father. Come, help me. What do you want me to do? Get the manners out of of course. Really, Father, I don't know what you have in mind. Of course you don't. If you did, you'd be running the place, and I'd be getting the suit. Oh, you're impossible. <laughs> it's all right, Fury. You can go. Mr. Manners will call on you shortly. <laughs> Albright to Consolidate it. Albright to Consolidate it. Come in. Consolidated answering Albright. What's your position? Come in. Estimated 10 miles north of you. Altitude 1,000. Show your lights. Tell him to turn back. It's sheer murder to let him land here. Turn back, Albright. You haven't a chance. Show me your lights, I tell you. Imperative. Running short of gas. Show your lights. Better follow his orders. So he'll be killed. I can't handle him. Throw on the floodlights and clear the field at once. Force landing. with the crash truck. Order everyone out. Plane coming in. Force landing. Oh, there must be some way to stop him. Not him, my dear. He usually falls through. Keep on trying. I'm circling over you now, catching the glow of the light. Altitude 600. Better not risk it. Nosing over for a landing. Here I come. Oh, it's no use, Major. He's landing. Well, let's get out there. I'll be outside if you need me. You better stay at your post. Give me Charlie. Nonsense. You'll have a good chance now. The fog is lifting. You certainly were lucky, Captain. It looked hopeless just a few minutes ago. Oh, it wasn't bad, Major. How about your father, Miss Edwards? Any further word? Nothing more, and I'm worried to death. Naturally. Well, my car is right here. We'll talk as we go. Get away! 
What do you make of it, all boy? I don't know yet, but I intend to find out. Get in. We're going to follow. Get a little closer, Major. I'll try and wing him. He's all right, just knocked out. Give me a hand with him. We've got to work fast before this man comes to. Is this one of the men that grabbed you? No, I'm sure it isn't. It was the one that jumped out. Well, he's met a getaway by now. Perhaps we can make this one talk. Look, Major, I don't want this man to see me. I think maybe I can persuade him to tell me everything he knows. I can't sanction anything that will reflect upon the methods of the United States Army. You can trust me not to do that, sir. I'll assume full responsibility. Now, here's what I mean to do. You and Joyce take the man to your office. And later on tonight... Yes? I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, could I speak to Major Steele? He's not in. What is it you want? Well, I wanted to make inquiries about, uh, about John Edward. What about him? Are you a friend of his? Not exactly a friend. An acquaintance. I met him at the Inventors Club. Talked to him about a project he had in mind. Found we had much in common. You see, inventions are my business. I called on him tonight. Found the house closed and the guard at the door. When I asked questions, I was referred to Major Steele. You see, I thought he might be able to give me some details about Mr. Edwards' invention. Sorry, sir. There's nothing we can tell you tonight. Oh. oh, sorry. Well, thank you for your courtesy. Oh, uh, you might give my card to Major Steele and tell him I'll try to get in tomorrow. Very well, sir. You better talk. It may save you from a murder charge. Murder? You can't pin a murder on me. I ain't done nothing. Captain Albright, who was in this car when you fired on it, was killed. I didn't shoot. It was the other guy. You were with him. That makes you equally guilty. So you better tell us who he is. If I ain't talking, I don't know nothing. Where are you taking? I tell you, I ain't talking. I don't know nothing. All right, all right. Sit down, Miss Edwards. It won't be long. You can go home, Lieutenant. I'll lock up. Yes, sir. Now then, you better talk and talk fast. Who's the leader of your organization? I don't know. I never seen him. Who gives you your orders? The man I was with tonight. What's his name? He hasn't got a name. We go by numbers. He's number seven. Where was John Edwards taken? I... I can't tell you that. I don't know. Then you will have to accept the responsibility for the death of Captain Albright. <laughs> you can't make that charge stand up. What can you do to me? I shall do nothing. But you will receive a visitor at midnight. He will be your judge and your executioner. Mr. Midnight. What do you mean? What's going to happen? You and your 
your gang of cutthroats have reason to know Captain Midnight by past reputation. Now you see him in person. I am Captain Midnight. And your gang can't save you now because I mean to eliminate you. Then there will be one less traitor to deal with. No, no. Stop, I'll tell you. Tell you. Talk fast and only the truth. Where is John Edwards? In a ranch house, three miles north of the village of San Lobos. Go on. I want the exact location and description of the place. It's a small ranch, set back off of the road. It has a sign so you'll recognize it. It's a white circle painted on the roof. All right, come on, sit down. Are you sure that's all? Yes. You'll have to come through with a key to your code, Edwards. The measurements and specifications given here are meaningless. If you expect me to help you read them, you're a greater fool than you look. Those plans belong to my country. Oh, your loyalty is commendable. But we have means of persuading people to talk. Even such ardent patriots as yourself. Now, you better talk, Edwards. Go ahead. I'm not afraid. has been taken prisoner. He'll probably tell all he knows. I'm going to have the ranch house destroyed from the air before it's raided. From the air? But you'll alarm the whole countryside. Don't question my order. I want to alarm them, terrorize them. Let them know my plans are not to be interfered with. Take Edwards with you and clear out. Yes, sir, yes. We'll remove all documents. It will be done at once. Morton, give me a hand. Help me pull these up. We got to scram. He's crazy. Who cares what you think? Go in and get him out of there. Well, what is it now? I haven't got time to explain. Orders from the boss. We got to scram. Hold it! Captain Midnight! Over, I'll let you have it. I'll take that prisoner. Let him have him. All right, take him. Reach. Fire! Mr. Hill, friend or enemy? Friend. Why, they've got my briefcase containing my plan. I'll take the briefcase. inventor. Can he have escaped the gang's vengeance? Or is the law prepared to seal his fate? And what about Chuck and Dicky? Can they escape the evil actions of Ivan Shark? Don't miss the stolen rangefinder. Next week's exciting chapter of Captain Midnight.